What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Neo Starling, and I am back here with another podcast. This particular topic might seem strange for my show, or it might not. You actually might resonate with some of what I am about to tell you. It is a little peculiar and not something that some might necessarily relate to, but who knows? Maybe you'll gain some value from it. Maybe you'll gain a life lesson, or maybe you'll think I'm full of crap. Only time will tell. Now, with that said, I want you to picture for a moment, you holding your parent's hand when you're crossing the street. There's a red light, so your parent tugs at you and tells you to stop, but you're defiant. You're a rebel. You want to expand and explore the world on your own. So you start shaking your parents' hands saying, let go of me, let go of me. I want to just go and be free. So you manage to somehow wiggle out of your parents' strong grasp and you cross the street. Then you hear a honking horn and then you feel yourself getting yanked back. Yes, you did not suffer that inevitable fate of getting hit by that car. Instead, what ended up happening was that your parent, whose hand you were trying to shake off, ended up pulling you back to safety. Now, why did that happen? That happened because your parent already had an understanding that if you, yourself, as a child, wanted to cross the street without looking both ways and without waiting for that light to change, you would meet your inevitable demise. And you're probably asking yourself, what does this even matter? What's the whole point of this? Well. If you've looked at the title, you know what I'm going to be talking about today. I want to talk about Cassandra's Tears. I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with Cassandra's Tears, so I will give you a brief history without going going into too much detail. So this is pretty much uh, Greek mythology that I'm going to be speaking of at this particular moment. Cassandra was a princess from Troy, and Cassandra caught favor with the god Apollo. Apollo was like, hey, you know what? I kind of like you, I want you, what's up? So she agreed at that particular moment that she would be with him. As a gift, he told her, I will bestow upon you the gift of foresight, the gift of having premonitions, you know, sort of like Phoebe from Charmed, right? <laughs> if, if you know, some of you kind of want an idea of what the ability was. What is a premonition? What is being precognitive? It is basically the supernatural ability to be able to foresee the future before it actually happens. That's essentially what it is, right? So he told her, hey, I'm gonna give you this power, but I just want you to be with me. What ends up happening? You fast forward a little bit, she ends up not wanting to be with Apollo. So he curses her. He tells her, you know what? I'm gonna give you this gift, but I'm also gonna make it so that nobody ever believes you. What a horrible fate to have, right? No one ever believing in you when you tell them something, especially if you know for a fact it's true. Well, that's what ended up happening. She gained the gift of foresight. Every time she would tell somebody what was going on, nobody ended up believing Cassandra, right? Now, this is very important. And the reason for that is because she actually predicted the inevitable fall of Troy and no one believed her, which is weird because she would foresee certain things happening and they actually came to pass. But because she was cursed, nobody believed her. Fast forward a little bit, she gets shift off to um, King Agamemnon. I, I can never say his name properly. Agamemno, right? If I'm saying it wrong, please feel free to correct me and tell me how ignorant I am in the comments below. Now, with that said, she essentially becomes his concubine, right? He does what he pleases with her, as any king at that time would do. She actually has a premonition of her and him dying in that particular place. Now, she tries to warn him. She's like, hey, your wife has some other dude that she's sleeping with on the side and she's going to take us both out. Now, him obviously not believing her because no one believes Cassandra. Everyone thinks she is nuts. He's like, no, my wife is faithful. How dare you, you winch? You're a concubine. You don't tell me that my wife isn't faithful. A little red pill moment for you fellas there, by the way, <laughs> because she was definitely playing him. And I mean, why wouldn't she, right? If you really stop and think about it, you know, the king was basically sleeping with whoever he wanted to. It's kind of realistic that you would expect his wife to not necessarily be the most faithful person, right? But with that said, he, uh, she ended up not believing him. So what happens? It actually comes to pass. The king and Cassandra end up getting murdered by the queen and her mystery man, right? So the gods took pity on Cassandra's soul and she actually ends up going to the Elysian fields, which in Greek mythology basically means heaven, right? Good for her. I'm glad that she got a good ending considering that up until that particular moment, she kind of had a horrible shitty life, right? 
The reason that I'm telling you this, the reason that I'm speaking of this legend is because I would like to think that through the mistakes of history, we could learn to not repeat them. Cassandra's tears was always really interesting to me because it's a very important life lesson. These are things that you can see modern day examples of. For example, climate change. Whether you believe in climate change is irrelevant. The point is, is that you have scientists telling you that, hey, the temperature of this planet is kind of rising and it's getting a little weird. This is not the norm. And everybody's like, no, no. You guys are nuts. This is silly. It's temperature. <laughs> How could you tell what it was billions and billions of years ago and related to today? Well, obviously we didn't have the infrastructures that we have now back then, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, climate change is a good example of that. So was the, the financial crash back in, in 2008, I believe it was. You know, there's a lot of examples that you can take from that little story and actually put it together to say, hey, wait a second, maybe I should listen to what actually is going on here. You know what? I'll give you an example that, that all the nerds can relate to, right? So this actually happened in Dragon Ball. Yes, believe it or not, Dragon Ball Z created a Cassandra's Tears storyline. And I bet you none of you ever actually saw it, but it was pretty evident. And that was not the episode of Bardock. I don't know if it was a movie of Bardock or a, a Bardock special, but not the episode that later kind of retconned him to sort of be like Superman's dad, no. This was the original one when he was an asshole. So to make a long story short for, for all my Dragon Ball tards out here, what ended up happening was that um, Bardock was invading a planet on behalf of Frieza. This is when the Saiyans and Frieza worked together. You know, they would basically uh, wipe out the population of the planet and Frieza would sell it to the highest bidder. You know, he was a planet trader basically. So this particular planet that the Saiyans attacked, the ability of the inhabitants were to be able to see the future. They thought that they killed everybody. So when they let their guard down, there was one dude that was left alive and he attacked Bardock and he kind of just blasted him. And all of a sudden Bardock started seeing all these visions of the future. He saw his eventual demise. He saw his son growing up to be the one that would overthrow their oppressor, which was Frieza at, the, at this time. And it was really interesting because, you know, the other Saiyans that were with Bardock end up killing that last soldier. But before he dies, he tells him that I've given you exactly what you wanted. I, I gave you the, this gift, but it's also a curse. No one's going to believe you. You're going to see your own death and no one is going to believe you. Bardock ends up seeing that Frieza was going to blow up their planet. So he ends up going back to their planet and he's telling everybody, hey, guys, like, yo, yo something's not right. Like, we're all going to die. We got to get ready. And everyone was like, nah, you're silly. This this tyrant, you know, is so trustworthy. He's been taking care of us all this time. They end up having a last stand and he shoots that little fireball and that iconic scene where Frieza just like waves his finger and sends this really big ball uh, that ends up consuming him and, des and destroying all of them. That's actually just a modern day example in, in even anime, right? That you can see where, where Cassandra's Tears was utilized. Now, what are some lessons that we can learn from this? What can you infer from hearing this type of information? It's to not necessarily doubt those that have more wisdom and more experience than you, because there's always someone that can teach you something. You know, like I used the parent example earlier with the child crossing the street. You see how this all ties back together. The parent has already been on their hero's journey. They've already went through the depths of perdition and came back and they were able to see what would end up happening if that kid ended up crossing the street. They knew that they had to pull him back to save their lives. Parents already know what's going on and they try to instill these beliefs in their children. And then you know what, vice versa. This happens later on when the parent themselves become too old and, and too foolish, you know, maybe they're sick and then they don't want to listen to the kids when they're like, hey, maybe you should get a checkup. Maybe, you know, you should see if everything is okay with you because we don't want anything to happen to you. But sometimes the parents have gone past the point of no return where they either don't care or don't believe they're in any type of danger. And that's another warning that is ignored. So you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it, right? That's a lesson that we're often taught. And I just wanted to kind of talk about this for a little while because it's a really interesting topic. And I think that we can all get some real good life lessons from this. Remember, learn from those that have already gone through this journey, the ones that have already rise from the depths and have actually succeeded. You know, now you don't want to blindly follow everybody. Of course not, because that's just silly. Who the hell wants to do that? But what you can do is learn. Always learn, always have an open mind. Don't be the type of person that is so close minded that nothing ever gets in. And as a result, you end up crumbling from within because you were never able to to be open enough to a different experience. You know, and a lot of us do that. You know, you have all your online gurus, right? You know, if someone has six pack abs and they're a personal trainer, hey, you know what? They went through that journey. They know what it's like. They know 
the tears and sweat and blood that it takes in order to attain a six pack. It is super rare. And that's why they're able to teach you how to attain one. I thought it was an interesting topic and I thought that, you know, maybe some of us could gain some value from it. So in clothing, clothing, in closing, I just want to say this. Don't be so close minded. Be willing to listen to each other. At the very least, listen. You might not always necessarily agree, but it doesn't mean that you can't learn something from each other. And this is a problem with our society. And I'm hoping that going forward, if we don't come together, if we don't make an effort to learn from the mistakes of our past, then we are doomed to repeat it. And we too, inevitably, will fall. Now, with that said, I've been your host, Neil Starling. I hope you enjoyed what I had to talk about here. And if you didn't, it's all good. Give me a thumbs down. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to have a conversation with all of you. You're all awesome. Don't ever let anyone tell you different. Signing off.